Hey y'all, DJ Legion back with you. Um, today we're going to um, show you what I picked up lately uh, that I haven't shown you yet, <laughs> which is a lot of albums. Uh, so this will be a pretty long video, so um, hope you packed a lunch, um, you know. So if you're watching, just settle in because this is going to be, uh, this is going to take a minute. Um, congratulations once again to Blackmore Rules, who's, um, who's, uh, for my 200 subs contest, the winner, his, uh, his prize should be here next week, and, um, I'll be sending that off to him, so, UCLT for some other VC members, uh, this week as well, so, but anyway, let's get to the new stuff, um, first of all, I'm going to show you one CD that I picked up, don't buy a lot of CDs, but, um, this is not out on vinyl yet, so we have to do what we can. This is Dracula. Um, in 1999, uh, the great composer Philip Glass rescored this film. The film was of 1931. Um, in 99, he uh, wrote a new score for it, and a group called the Kronos Quartet. Uh, just four musicians, two violins, one viola, and one cello. Uh, they um, they performed a whole new score for the movie. So the DVDs and um, that you, and the Blu-rays that have come out since '99 uh, have the option to get the, to play this soundtrack when you watch the film. Great stuff. I love the artwork, the original Universal uh, poster. Love the back here great shot of the from the film and this is just a slip case and so you take it out and there's the cover you can see <laughs> the reflection of the phone <clears throat> yeah anyway and here's the uh, take you show you some of the interior great stuff uh, some of the photos there you can see the all these coming from the film. I'll show you the insert because it is uh, fabulous as well. Opens up here. And then both of these open up. Uh, and you get more images from the film. Great stuff. Uh, this is going to be released on vinyl. Uh, this, uh, uh, this composition, Philip Glass, uh, I think October 31st, Halloween. Uh, that's, um, <laughs> that's kind of great, actually. Uh, so it will be available on vinyl, but it will not have, but this will be the cover, uh, apparently from what I've seen. It will not have the poster artwork from 1931, uh, which is unfortunate because it'd be great to have an album, uh, with this artwork on it. But anyway, yeah, this is fantastic stuff. Uh, I might not get the album, actually, because I'm totally happy with, uh, with the CD. This is great stuff right here. And they still perform this. Believe it or not, um, they have performances around the world where um, they screen the film on the, on, the, uh, on the screen and the Kronos Quartet is playing live to it um, So for the audience. So that's pretty great. Um, yeah, very cool. So the CD that I got recently all right, moving on to the vinyl. I got a stack, a stack of stuff to show you. 1957, Lena Horn at the Waldorf Astoria. Uh, this is a concert they taped on December 31st, so New Year's Eve, 1956, in the Empire Room of the Waldorf Astoria in New York City, and then... It was released early 1957. This is great stuff. Uh, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the great jazz musicians that came through in the 60s and went on to big fame, Blue Note Records, and on into the 70s. Uh, I and mean, then they were cutting their chops and learning their craft in house bands that played at these fine hotels, the Waldorf Astoria, the Fairmont. Um, Mark Hopkins, so on and so forth. They were, um, 
you know, they just have, these guys were coming through in the 50s learning their craft. A lot of them played unaccredited in a lot of these, uh, a lot of these house bands. All right, next up. Meatloaf, Bad Out of Hell, 1977 on Epic. Uh, this is a very, very clean copy of this album. You can see there, no ring wear on the front or the back. Um, I love this record. Jim Steinman's songwriting is excellent. Paid 15 bucks for this, which uh, seems too high. This is about an $8 album, but um, it's in excellent shape. And this pressing is from Holland. They even put a nice Mylar sleeve inside the paper sleeve and uh, so you can see the label is well I can't get it there we go very unique label it's still on epic but it's a unique Cleveland records yeah Holland pressing so that and the fact that it is in beautiful condition uh, was what I you know I was willing to pay uh, the $15 to get this Always love this record. Have the CD. Have two of the CDs actually. Been looking for the vinyl. Uh, most of the time you see them, they're pretty beat up. Uh, and of course, they have a reissue if you want to spend thirty bucks. But I don't. So yeah, very happy to get this Holland import, fifteen bucks. <clears throat> Next up, Halloween, Keeper of the Seven Keys, Part Two. If you're a metalhead, you know this group well. Um, this is from 1988, and this is an original U.S. pressing, not a German pressing, which is where they're from. Uh, I was in Germany for two years, from 88 to 90. Uh, lived in Germany, and these guys were it. <laughs> these guys were big, big news in 1988, especially because this was the album that they were... This album really took them over the top uh, uh, in Europe. Uh, so I've been meaning to find this on vinyl. This is an original. These are tricky to get. Um, they just didn't catch on in the States. They tried to... RCA did a little bit of promoting, tried to break them in the States, but... You know, a lot of bands, Man Award, Nightwish, Halloween... Uh, they just don't break stateside for some reason. Uh, but anyway, this is a great record. Um, if you haven't heard of them or not familiar with their music, Iron Maiden. Iron Maiden would be a good... Um, a good reference point for these guys. A lot of guitar, a lot of um, kind of higher pitched vocals. That's a great record. I love every song on this. I've had the CD for a while. Stoked to get the vinyl. Paid twenty dollars to get this. Still had the shrink on it actually uh, when I bought it, but it was starting to get brittle, you know, and, and they start rippling up really tight, and they, the, the shrink wrap will uh, will start sticking to your album covers if you don't get it off at that point. So I had to pull the shrink wrap off to ensure that we didn't get, I didn't want it to stick to the cover and damage it in any way. But anyway, it's a great record. Highly recommend this band. Ah, pick these two up. The Lone Ranger and another one. I love the artwork on this one. Amazing. Two of the old time radio shows from the 1950s. Um, free TV. Uh, this is uh, great stuff. Um, big fan of these old shows. And I have a video, actually, an early video that I did showing a bunch of this stuff. The Shadow, the Green Hornet, Dragnet, um, the Lone Ranger, uh, Flash Gordon. So I love these old radio shows. I haven't bought, found any on vinyl in a while. Um, at least not at a price I was going to pay. Uh, but I picked both of these off for a couple of bucks a piece. Uh, and got four more episodes. There's one episode on each uh, each side of the album. So I have four episodes, new episodes of uh, The Lone Ranger on vinyl. Stoked to get these. Audio uh, Speedwagon High Infidelity. 1980 on um, Epic. If you were there, you know... This thing was the number one album for almost six months. Uh, it's been a lot of weeks at the top. They pressed millions of them. Um, I only paid two bucks for this copy. It's very, very clean. A little bit of ring where you can see right there on the top and probably the bottom as well. Um, this is a good example of um, an album that they would make a reissue of and charge all the millennials and newbies. 
Don't need to do that. I, two bucks. There's millions of these. They, they must have pressed five million copies of this. You know, if 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 seventy percent of them were lost between 1980 and today, there's still a million copies floating around out there. You know, so yeah, don't pay uh, don't pay your 29.99. They probably have a reissue of this. This is the kind of stuff they love to reissue and gouge people for for $29 an album or $25 an album. There's plenty of these out there for two bucks, three bucks, five bucks. Like I said, this one's in great shape. $1.95. Uh, Gordon Lightfoot. Which one is the one I want to show you? This is Don Coyote from Gordon Lightfoot. Uh, this is an upgrade. Paid two bucks for this. Still had the shrink wrap on it. But once again, the same problem. It's starting to get a little too brittle. Starting to ripple up a little too much. And at that point, it wants to stick to the jacket. This is from 1972. The only song that wound up on his greatest hits album uh, later on was the title track, Don Coyote. But all the songs are great on this. Like I said, this is an upgrade for me. Here's my original. Um, and you can see the difference, particularly in the back. I'll put my original on top. Yeah, it's beat to crap. It's got ring wear. And then the new one, nice and pretty. Uh, and uh, this my the new one now has the original inner sleeve. My old one did not. And of course the vinyl is in better condition as well. Johnny Paycheck, take this job and shove it. Epic Records, 1977. Um, I am not a huge country and western fan. Don't go out of my way for it. But um, this is one of the classic outlaw country albums. Johnny Paycheck, um, stuff in that vein, Willie Nelson, Waylon Jennings, Johnny Cash, David Allen Coe, that kind of stuff. Um, um, I like that particular type of country in that era. So this is uh, one I've been wanting to get for a while. Uh, yeah, it's got the classic song, Take This Job and Shove It. A lot of other great tunes on this one, Barstool Mountain, Spirits of St. Louis, From Cotton to Satin. Yeah, this is a great record, great country album. Like I say, not a genre that I focus on too much, but every once in a while you find one that um, I find one that I think I, my collection should have. All right, now we're going around the world here. Let's see uh, if I can pronounce this correctly. The street musicians of Yagyakarta. There it is. Uh, this is an interesting record. Um, Yogyakarta, by the way, is a city in Indonesia on the island of Java. And um, this is a really, <laughs> this is really unique, very unique piece um, to hear these, uh, these street performers uh, being recorded. It's pretty great as well. It comes with a booklet. And there is the English translation of the lyrics as well as some sheet music and a little write-up on the musicians. So you get a lot of information. You know, you go from knowing zero about the street musicians of Yagyakarta to knowing uh, a fair amount of stuff. So that's kind of great. Um, yeah, great stuff. And there's also a 7-inch that came in here as well. I can get it. Come on now. Come on. Yeah, it came with a little seven inch record as well. Very interesting. Mississippi Records put this out. And this album dates to 2011. So that's interesting stuff. Uh, you know, it's not pop and hip and catchy and any of that. Um, it's uh, definitely not anything that I'm used to. Uh, it's going to take a while for this to grow on me, but. I'm going to go to love this album, I'm sure. All right, going to the UK. Uh, the best of Ewan McCall. British folk music for the connoisseur. I think I paid 3 or $4 for this. I love Ewan McCall. Love his voice. Uh, Peggy Seeger does banjo on guitar. Alf Edwards um, plays some instruments as well. This is on Prestige International. Uh, came out in 
We do not have a date. We do not have a date. But anyway, looks to be the 70s for sure. Uh, it might be the 60s. See if it's going to tell me on the bottom. No. Anyway, but yeah, I love this guy. His stuff's tricky to get in the States. Uh, Ewan McCall. Great stuff. Great, you know, he has that accent. Singing those traditional folk songs. It's, it's great. And we have another one from him. Off to see once more A.L. Lloyd and Ewan McCall. This one is really hard to find. Um, I paid 25 bucks for this, which is about the high end. But what I'm going to pay for an album. This one's on red vinyl. Uh, very cool. A lot of the old seafaring sailor songs are on this, including Van Diemen's Land, Blood Red Roses, um, Lord Franklin. Yeah, there we go. There's the tracks. This is great stuff. Uh, once again, tricky to get in the States. Um, but um, I love this guy, Ewan McCall. He's fabulous. I have a few more albums on my want list uh, from him. Uh, now we're moving to Ireland. Uh, Rugg Celtic Collection for Dulcimer. Guy named Michael Rugg. Uh, this is all instrumental Irish, traditional Irish tunes and um, no vocals. Pay two bucks for this. This is great stuff. You know, I love to get stuff like this and get it on the cheap so I can discover new music, um, you know, without having to pay 20 bucks an album. And also just because. Once again, as I always mention, how many Black Sabbath, Pink Floyd, Led Zeppelin, Beatles, Rolling Stones, etc., etc., reissues are we going to keep buying? And another one here, once again, <clears throat> also traditional Irish music. Andy Gann and Patty Reynolds, a couple of fiddle players, and a guy named Paul Brady is playing guitar on this. Once again, it's all instrumental, traditional Irish, no vocals, and I'll um, show you the back there. I love the label on this, too. And this, again, once again, was $2. Uh, so I was stoked to get this. And, of course, it comes with a sheet of information and the sheet music. So if you're a fiddle player, I suppose, or any other instrument, you can take this and play yourself some Irish folk. And I love the label, which I mentioned, but I'll show it to you here. Love it. Look how cool that looks. It's great. Yeah, $2 for this one. And uh, we're moving on to France now. <laughs> this is Les Baxter's La Femme. Uh, Frank Porcel and his French strings. Frank Porcel is like the French Henry Mancini. Uh, this is a naked woman on the cover. Hopefully they won't ding me for that. Uh, got this in the Exotica slash lounge section at the record shop, which is a genre that I'm going to start getting into and collecting. Um, and because it has a nude woman, that also, uh, that's like a subset. They'll be able to collect just um, nude uh, females on these album covers, uh, these Exotica uh, lounge music album covers um but anyway this is a joy to listen to it's such it just it's fabulous this is such an easy record to listen to and great musicianship once again no vocals it's all instrumentals it's really really great this is on capital um i had this on my ebay watch list for a few months um but i didn't buy it off ebay i found a copy at um, a shop in berkeley i don't know what i paid for this Probably at least ten dollars, though I forgot. But it's probably at least ten dollars. Um, yeah, it's it's great stuff. Uh, to India now. See where we're going. Yeah, we're going around the world. Uh, there's a series of albums called Music Rough Guides, and it, and it's that's the, like a series of records underneath that title, Music Rough Guides, and it's showcasing um, it's very niche specific genres of music and this one is the rough guide to psychedelic india i paid full price for this my friends 22 bucks and they had just got it in that day 
Um, they just got it in that day because there was a price sticker and it had the today's date stamped. The day I bought it, anyway, it was stamped. So they had just got it. Only got one copy and it didn't last long. Uh, picked this up. Um, I was hoping it was going to be a little more Bollywoodish. It's a little more psychedelic and a little less India. <laughs> Um, I was thinking it was going to be a little more 60s psych and mixed in with some Bollywood style. So it really wasn't what I was expecting. Um, and I listened to it the first time and I was really tired and didn't think I was, I liked one song on track one and that was it. But then I played side two and, um, yeah, I liked it. I liked the second side. Probably liked the first side too. It's just that I was exhausted when I heard it the first time and, um, shouldn't have, maybe should have waited until I was more, um, awake. Um, anyway, this is Ganesh, by the way, for you, uh, Ganesh, the Hindu god. So, there you go. It's awesome artwork, isn't it? <laughs> it's great. All right, we're moving back stateside now. This is Odetta Sings Dylan, 1960s on, uh, is this RCA? RCA Victor. So, she was in the 50s. Odetta was on an independent label called Tradition Records, but now her star is rising, and she's been picked up by RCA Records, and I mean, it's Odetta. It's Odetta. Her back's not that interesting, actually. Um, it's Odetta's voice and guitar work and Dylan's lyrics and songwriting. What's not to like about it? Stoked to get this. An amazing, mind-crushing version of Mr. Tambourine Man is on this. And um, great version of The Times They Are a Changin'. Uh, that one's a, uh, another one. Just um, with God on our side also. Amazing renditions of those songs by Odetta, whom I love. Uh, so always on the lookout for uh, an Odetta album that I don't have. Rod <clears throat> Stewart. Out of Order. Uh, this came out in 88, I believe. Yeah, it had to be. Yeah, 88. Um, nothing special about this. Had a couple of hit singles that they spun on the radio. Lost in You. And probably um, My Heart Can't Tell Her No. Those are probably the hits. Um, nothing special about this album. Paid a few bucks for it. But it's had a special place in my heart. When I... Um, in between graduating boot camp and being shipped off to Germany in 88, um, you know, they give you a couple of weeks leave at home to get, every, get your affairs in order before you leave to go overseas for a few years. And um, Rod Stewart came through town in that two-week period, and I went to that show just to see some concerts before I went off to Germany. Uh, he was touring on this album. Uh, so this album's always been uh, kind of uh, a special place in my heart even though there's nothing particularly unique about it. <clears throat> Got another one, Rod Stewart. Fool Loose and Fancy Free. Just an early album, or Footloose, does it say Footloose? It is Footloose. So you can see on the back, Footloose. But on the, it's really tricky the way the font is. Footloose and Fancy Free. Um, you know, it's one of his early albums, has hot legs on it. His early hits. Um, you're in my heart. Um, I was only joking. Yeah, just one of his earlier albums, Warner Brothers Records, 1977. Yeah, nothing special particularly. I paid a couple of bucks for it. <laughs> Ted Nugent, the self-titled. This is the new reissue. From 2016, this past, uh, just came out this summer, and like the other one, uh, The State of Shock, um, it is also on the green vinyl. And this is his best album, in my opinion, his debut album. Um, it's great. Stranglehold, Queen of the Forest, Stormtroop, and Hey Baby, Where Have You Been All My Life. Every song on this is great. Fabulous. I love this record. Um, yeah, really like this album a lot. And I'm very happy to report to you all that I only had to buy one of these. Only had to buy it once. 
Great stuff. Uh, the the follow up. There's another one in this series. Um, come on now. Think. Uh, free for all. I put that on order, so I will have all three of the green vinyl edition Ted Nugent's in a week or two. I'll have the last one, which is um, free for all. That's on order. And I also found a decent copy of Cat Scratch Fever. Some seventy-seven. Um, you know, they, they didn't they didn't put out a green vinyl edition of this. I don't know why, because this was his most popular album. Um, but it's just a decent copy. I paid eight bucks for it. I'll show you the gatefold. Usually when I see Ted Nugent records from this period, they beat to crap. They look like crap. Ringwear. They're, they're just, people love their Ted Nugent back in the day and just wore those albums out. So I was glad to see a decent copy. Not too beat up. Uh, just a little bit of wear on it and uh, paid eight bucks for it and so there you have it don't know if they're gonna put this out on the green vinyl um, or any of his other ones weekend warriors intensities in ten cities uh, great gonzo's double live gonzo scream dream I don't know if those are gonna be put out on the green vinyl or not no word on that yet and uh, David Johansson from 1981 here comes the night Paid eight dollars for this, is that right? Yeah, seven ninety-eight, right there. Paid eight bucks to get this. Um, it's on Blue Sky Records. It's a gold stamp promo. Um, yeah, David Johansson, lead singer of the New York Dolls. Anything that he does, anything that Johnny Thunders, David Johansson, Sylvain Sylvain, Arthur Kane, anything they've got their fingerprints on, I'm gonna track it down and get it. Very happy to add this. And finally, uh, Frank Sinatra, Songs for Swinging Lovers. This is the 2016 180 gram reissue. Uh, originally came out in 1956, and I do have some 7 inches from this album. Original 1956, 7 inches from this album in my 45 collection, actually. Um, yeah, there it is. Original back cover, very good reproduction. Um, this came to my local shop, um, not sealed in shrink wrap. I don't know. Sometimes her distributor just puts extra stuff in there um, as a bonus or whatever. But anyway, so she got it in a box of, uh, of albums, a weekly shipment, and um, it was not in the shrink wrap. Uh, this should have cost me about $23, but because it was not in the shrink wrap, um, I only paid... I think $16 for this. So it was meant unplayed apparently, but it wasn't in the shrink wrap. Uh, so I got a good buy on this. This is one of his key albums. A lot of his hits are on here. Pennies from Heaven, You Make Me Feel So Young, Got You Under My Skin, Making Whoopee. Um, it Happened in Monterey. So yeah, some of his key hits. It's Sinatra, it's great stuff. Um, I mean, would I have paid 25 bucks for it if it was sealed? Probably not. But to get it for, uh, you know, 17 that was a good enough buy for me. So, all right, there it is, man. A lot of different genres. A lot of unique stuff in this one. Uh, I just, the way it worked out, found a lot of great, uh, a lot of great stuff. Unique pieces from all over the world. Um, and was stoked to get it. Uh, what's coming up is... Once again, the new that last Ted Nugent green vinyl uh, that's on order. Got some VCLT for Jex on order. Got some VCLT for DJ Trish on order. Uh, got a halfway put together VCLT package for Cat Moonchild. Um, and of course, of course, I've got a huge package going out next week to um, um, Blackmore Rules, the winner of my 200 subs contest. So I'll be looking for that. Yeah, it's great stuff. Great stuff ahead. Two weeks out to Black Sabbath now. It's getting close. <clears throat> Looking forward to that show. Um, like I say, I love when you buy tickets to concerts. I, you know, you get them way early, and then you have to wait months and months before the band actually shows up. But now we're getting close. September 15th is just around the corner. All right, my friends. That is it, and that is all. Um, I'll see you again shortly, and until then, you know what to do. Turn up the music. Turn down the drama. 
and I'll see you real soon.